one of the first misconceptions that I want to um, get out of the way as far as health is you can be good or fine or excellent, but in health, there's actually no ceiling to health. So being not sick or not in pain is not what I would consider health. It's, it's the beginning of health. So even when you feel perfectly fine, there's no ceiling to health that can be achieved, which I think is a wonderful thing, and I didn't even realize it um, when I started my journey, I guess. So, you know, I'm not saying everyone here can listen to my lecture and do some yoga for a couple of weeks and, you know, do some breathing and then eat some good raw foods and then suddenly, like, go out and do as good of a job as, say, Johnny Manziel did with Browns. Oh, wait, I think everyone here could actually go out and not score any points. So, see, there really is no limit to health. You're already there. So, um, but I do want to let you know that everyone here has had a different starting point. But your health can be improved. Even the best athletes in the world are, you know, they're hiring trainers. They're looking for ways to get better. So just take where you're at now as a starting point. And if you're truly interested in feeling better tomorrow more than you did today, just know that it is possible from my own personal experience. So the main reason why I call my lecture here the nature of health is, as you'll see, uh, the closer you are to doing things that are in line with nature, the better you're going to feel. The further away you go from doing things that are in line with nature, the worse you're going to feel. So if you spend most of your days eating uh, you know, Twinkies and Ohoros and stuff like that, you're probably not going to feel very good because it's really far away from nature. Whereas if you're eating, you know, celery and carrots and stuff like that, you're probably going to end up feeling a little better. So there's so much information and everything out there as far as do this, do this special diet. And my advice to everyone to begin would be just align yourself the closer your food is to being directly from nature, the better you're going to feel. The further away it is, the more packaged process, and it's got 150 ingredients in it, you're not going to feel good after you eat it. So, my quick background here, I actually went to St. Ignatius here in Cleveland. Uh, from there, I went to Emory University and I was at a business school. I studied finance, information technology, and philosophy. And then, I actually went to UNLV and started my master's degree before I began a bunch of different businesses, a health food store, online supplement store. And then, uh, ultimately, I was given an opportunity to go to uh, Florida, where I was able to work at Perfect Competition and Athletes Edge, and was able to work with some of the best athletes in the entire world. Um, did the NFL Combine for guys like Patrick Peterson and Stephen Ridley. We had guys like you know Manny Ramirez, Miguel Ferreira, um, and we were doing this. Some of the best players and athletes in the world that I've been able to train with. So I'm able to see what they're doing versus what the normal person is doing and how they're able to achieve those results. So not necessarily saying you'll be able to get that level athletically, but if you just kind of do what you're doing, you'll be able to get a better level of health. So the only reason they're these super elite athletes is because they're healthier than everyone else. They, you know, a lot of people put in the same amount of time either shooting baskets or playing baseball, but it's the baseline level of health that distinguishes the super elite athletes from the maybe the guys who don't make it, is you know, what I found. From there, now currently, I'm actually doing an online master's in sports management at Concordia, and I'm also going to the University of Texas, where I'm doing a master's in kinesiology degree. I've also been uh, certified by the NSCA to do uh, certified personal training and certified strength and conditioning specialist for over 10 years now. So a lot of experience in that. What's kinesiology? It's just the study of how the body moves. So ology is just the study of, as far as the etymology goes, and kinesis just refers to the movement of your body and awareness of it in space and time. Um, several books I've actually uh, helped personally write and co-author four books over the past few years. So the first one here is my own personal journey about how I you know, really got into this originally. It's called The Journey of a Lifetime, uh, journey, uh, the journey of a Lifetime, Yoga for the Warrior Athlete. And the next one here is uh, Mother and Daughter's Journey, True Health and Healing Through Acupuncture, Raw Foods, and Juicing. So that was by, uh, I helped Ashley and her mother Lisa write in. Lisa was uh, on pain medications for over 10 years. She had uh, several surgeries when she came to us, and after her first acupuncture treatment, she walked out holding her cane in her air, and there, you know, wasn't able to, didn't need it anymore, and after several months, she was actually off of all of her pain medications. And actually during the process of her going through this, uh, the doctor who was prescribing her all the pain medication actually ended up dying. So, you know, it's kind of...
kind of uh, mm. different paths, I guess, as far as the, you know, they, they both chose different paths to take. Next one here is my good friend uh, Nick Fricchetti here, who is a uh, wrestler, an Olympic level wrestler actually, and has fought in Bellator and uh, the UFC. So uh, when he came to the clinic uh, where I worked at, he could barely move his hands. He had a big fight coming up, and the guy could barely move. And after some acupuncture, raw foods, and juicing, he was able to you know, successfully get a lot of his movement back, a lot of his pain gone. And now he, uh, you know, he actually ended up winning the fighting this training before. So he's pretty happy about that. And the last one here, uh, these are uh, two of the people that I've worked with over the past three years, uh, David Burke here and Dr. Lisa Wampel. So David won uh, the Mr. Australia and then placed at the Natural Olympia. He competed in, uh, it's a natural bodybuilding competition, but they actually do drug testing. So you know, he's not turning himself into a freak monster or anything like steroids. He had to do it all naturally because he was tested. Uh, and then Dr. Elisa Wampo here, uh, she's, uh, she has her uh, doctorate in uh, licensed acupuncture and she's an, also an OMD or a medical doctor. And recently Dave actually trained her to win uh, the Bikini Fitness Championships. <laughs> so, um, which is pretty interesting after only a few months of training and you know, her nutrition and diet, uh, she's actually able to win. So I, I think that's pretty impressive too that she actually practices what she preaches. I think there's too many people nowadays, especially in the medical and health field, who tell you what to do and they haven't achieved a level of health. Uh, another thing I put up there, if you're trying to get to a certain level of health, and you're talking to someone um, who isn't at that level of health, I think you're doing yourself a disservice. You know, just because someone went to school and fell asleep in class for you know four or five years, and they now have some initials behind their name, doesn't mean they actually know anything about health. So you know, if you're going to go to you know, certain doctors and everything, my recommendation is go to someone who practices what they preach. Who say goes to the gym every year, is at a correct weight, and you know actually does do the kind of health and nutrition that you're attempting to gain. So, and that was the Nourishment for the Spiritual Warrior book. That was actually a best-selling book in Whole Foods, and uh, one location in Vegas actually said there was a one month where that book outsold every book they had in the entire store by itself, which I thought was pretty impressive. So, so to begin here, one of my first recommendations that I personally do is the idea of raw foods. And the idea of that is not cooking something above, say, 105 to 120 degrees. That's where some of the things which you definitely need to maintain a level of health start to break down, such as it does not destroy your vitamins and minerals. So if you're heating your food to significant temperatures, the vitamins and minerals in the food end up being destroyed. The other main thing is the enzymes. The enzymes that are in all of these foods, especially you know, fruits and vegetables, end up getting destroyed when you keep them at high temperatures. So that's why the idea of raw foods and raw food movement comes in is, again, is lining yourself as close to nature as possible. So if there's, say, celery and cucumbers and all that, and they're growing in the yard, as soon as you pick it, that's when you want to start eating it, as close to nature as possible. I know everyone here doesn't want a farm or anything like that, but the longer you have things sitting around, as soon as you're putting preservatives into a bunch of food, it's the enzymes and the minerals and vitamins are all going to be destroyed at that point. So you're getting very little nutrition. So the biggest problem here, I think in the US, um, people think we have so much food in abundance and everything, but people are putting so little actual food into their body. So I would say a lot of people are eating food-like substances. If you go to McDonald's and Burger King, all these fast food places, um, my personal idea is that it's not even nutrition or food. You're just going to eat that and you're going to need more because there's literally nothing in it that your body can, can use to survive. So that's why getting closer to nature, again, a live food makes you more alive. So as you put more alive food in your body, it makes you more alive. If you put dead food in your body, it's just going to get you closer to being dead. Pretty simple equation. And so here's a few different studies that I wanted to go over with everyone. I'm not sure if you can see this, so I'll just kind of read these out loud. Um, one was a study where people got significantly smarter on raw food. So uh, they did a university study where the IQs of students were found to be raised by 40% after only eating raw foods for two days. 
their IQs went up 40% in two days just by switching to raw foods. So, um, you know, feel free to look any studies up if anyone wants the actual information, I can certainly get that to them. But I think that's a pretty impressive statistic. Anyone want to be 40% smarter? <laughs> and then, well, I don't think anyone would want to eat raw meat. I mean, I personally wouldn't eat it. And, yeah, well, there are a lot of, you will see if I, I personally don't eat sushi. I mean, I, I actually stick more to a vegan vegetarian diet. But you will find a lot of parasites, especially in sushi, more than anything else. And it's because it's not cooked. The reason why the cooking of meat is because there are all the bacteria and the parasites in it. So um, my idea with meat in general, as we'll get to, is that I like the phrase, you, you can just cut out the middleman. So all the cows and all these animals, right, they're eating grass for the most part, unless they're getting fed a bunch of other you know, stuff that they shouldn't be. But they're eating grass and they have two stomachs in order to process all the grass that they're getting in. So instead of eating meat, you can get all your nutrients from you know, grass, which is where people that are becoming vegan and vegetarian have seen a lot of uh, benefits with their health just by doing that. So you don't have to eat the meat, you don't kill the vitamins and minerals and enzymes, and you also don't have to worry about the parasites and the bacteria. So uh, another study here which was interesting is that uh, Dr. Abramowski, by adopting a raw vegan diet, um, he basically reversed his own medical conditions that he has, and then they decided to take 100 patients and divide them into two groups at a hospital he was working at. So one group was given three pounds of fresh fruit to eat per day, and they were taking off all their drugs. The other group was put in on uh, standard, hospital, standard hospital food and drug therapy. And so after several weeks, the, uh, they decided to terminate the experiment because the head nurse objected to what she called the inhumanity of the experiment because she felt it was immoral to keep giving drugs and cooked food to the patients because she said it was clearly killing them. So this is just another experiment where they had to stop the experiment because they thought the group that wasn't getting you know, the healthy, nutritious food and that weren't doing the drugs were getting significantly healthier than the other groups. I mean, you know, like why are they even giving these drugs and that's the other thing. This is just a hospital study here. So. And there's some really good quotes in here too that you can take a look at. Um, pretty much every religious institution has quotes referring to um, the health benefits that can be had by you know, being a vegan vegetarian and eating you know, more fruits and vegetables. Uh, one good one here from Genesis 129. And God said, Behold, I have given you every herb bearing seed which is upon the face of all the earth, and every tree in the which in which is the fruit of a tree yielding seed, to you it shall be for meat. So they're basically saying, you know, you can eat all these fruits and vegetables instead of meat. You don't need all that. Another good one is that uh, let's see, you got another good one here. Uh, so this is from uh, let's see, Daniel 1.8, that Daniel proposed in his heart that he would not defile himself with a portion of the king's meat, nor with the wine which he drank. Therefore, he requested of the prince of the eunuchs that he might not defile himself. So if you go through the, again, all religious texts have all this information as far as uh, different, um, relating to being, you know, vegetarian, vegan, and what they kind of ate back in the day. So I just found that some good information. So another reason I had, um, and people have often asked me too about milk, is that my problem is definitely the pasteurization process. Again, a study here from uh, Shank and Bidwell. They did a study where the effects of heat treatment on the nutritive value of pasteurized milk. And they did, uh, they did a study where nine out of 10 calves that they gave pasteurized milk, the same mother's milk that these calves were used to drinking, all the calves died before they reached maturity. So all the milk here, by law, has to be pasteurized. You can see, you know, sometimes police attacking and going after raw milk. Um, but for me personally, if I was to drink, have milk or cheese, I would make sure that it's raw. Again, it maintains the enzymes, the nutrients, all that stuff. And, you know, I want that in my body. I don't want high heated, pasteurized, dead food being put in my body. What do you think about soy milk? Uh, well, soy is probably, I'd say soy and corn are two of the things you have to watch out as far as being genetically modified. If you're going to have soy, I would definitely make sure for it to be organic. And 
in small doses, I'd say it's probably fine for women. Guys don't want to get too crazy with it because it can have hormonal imbalances. Um, but I would say, you know, for you specifically, you may want to check with the doctor who's interested in that. But I haven't had any problems having, um, you know, small amounts of soy every day. I haven't had really issues. And all the people we work with, it has its, uh, it has its purpose in Chinese medicine. Um, like anything else, you need to make sure you have the whole balance. I wouldn't go on like an all soy diet. Explain GMOs. Oh, I will get into that in a little bit. So, and this is another really interesting one. So, Dr. Seleski studied the effects of a raw food diet from 1937 to 1970, and he guided more than 123,600 people okay, on a raw food diet. And according to his results, published in his book, The Chemistry of the Youth, over 90% of the patients, this is over 100,000 patients, over 90% regain their health from raw foods. So that's a pretty big long-term study with a lot of people. Um, so one of the main things I like to suggest for people, especially if you're trying to do more raw foods, is that uh, just start doing some juicing. There's some basic juice recipes here. And uh, what's really cool is that you can really do any combination of raw foods and vegetables. Just put together a bunch of, um, bunch of foods that you like. And you, know, you can drink it every day. You get mega doses of vitamins and minerals, and then you know you don't have to worry about eating like three pounds of lettuce or anything. You have to get all the nutrient benefits of it. You can just throw it together in a juicer. Jack in the Lane juicer is pretty cheap. You can get it pretty much anywhere. That's what I actually use. And you can get all the health benefits from raw foods. Um, and I've noticed too a lot of people, even by just doing exactly what they're doing every day, if you just start adding juice again, so not changing your diet.